All right, welcome back. In case you're just joining us, you're on to Moneyline with uh, Nancy. Uh, the first segment, Johnson Chuku, the MD of Akari Asset Management, joined me. We spoke about Brexit as well as coronavirus. The network was poor. But, uh, Mr. Chuku, if, you can, if you're still watching, I'll speak to you some other time. Now, let's go over to our second segment. Tosin on last shame day. Is joining me. She's the founder of Money Africa. It's time to chat about your money, my money, what you need to do with it. Tosi, welcome to the program. Can I see you? Hi, Tosi. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Nancy. How are you? I'm well. Happy New Year. Have we spoken this Happy year? year? We haven't no, spoken. We have. <laughs> How you doing? Yeah. I'm doing great. Yourself? I'm doing well. I'm fine. I'm fine. But could be better. I want more money. I want to make my money this year. So I'm trying That's to... That's what we're hearing from everyone. Everyone is talking about 2020 and my money. I'm telling you. I, I want yes, to make more that. money. I want to make more money. You know? You know? You know? I want to make more money. The right will. You know, <laughs> we need to of put course. that. <laughs> we need to put that into perspective. Okay, it's another Finance Friday. This segment comes up Fridays. Uh, I especially created the segment because you know I realized the need for financial literacy. Number one, number two. A lot of us really like to go get money, but we really do not know how to spend it, how to save it, how to invest it, how to make your money work for you, how to increase your earning potentials and all of that. So I said, okay, fine, let's do something around this Finance Friday. Get personal finance expert. Personal finance is one topic I like discussing. So let's get started. Personal finance could be perhaps understanding um, your financial condition is about having a plan, uh, having a plan to make most of your assets work for you, be it liquid and illiquid. The first question for you is, what are the keys to open the door of financial freedom? Is that one key or there are a lot mm. of keys, bunch of keys? There are lots of keys. Well, let me start with the most important one. Every time we're talking about financial literacy, we like to start at the very core. So whenever we're thinking about wealth, personal finance is actually 80% mindset and 20% knowledge. If one person has the knowledge without the mindset, there's a very high chance that they will be back to where they are. And if they have the mindset and they don't have the knowledge, the same thing could happen. So mindset is very, very critical. What are your thoughts about money? What is your perception about money? Many people have negative thoughts about money. They always think that it cannot be me. I will not be able to do this. I will not be able to do that. And it starts in the mind. And this is not a motivational speaking thing. Mm. There's actually science to back it. So you actually need to have positive thoughts about money. You need to think of abundance. You need to think that you can earn more money. You can think that you can live in the neighborhood you want to live in. So start thinking positively about money. Now, the next thing is about the knowledge. So knowledge is very, very critical. One thing we have noticed is that people just want to jump right into it. They just want to jump into start investing. But guess what? What is good for A might not be good for B. So understanding the rudiments. So what is a money market mutual fund? What, is the what kind of shares should I buy? Am I limited to Nigeria? Do I have access to the global market? All these kind of questions. It's very, very critical that the person actually gets the knowledge. So to answer your question, how do you go about it? You go about it by number one, fixing your mindset, thinking positively, knowing that you have the right mind about money, then gaining the right knowledge to actually start investing. You know, let, let me just take you up on some of the things you said. I like that you brought up the aspect that what we're saying is not motivational speaking. It's, it's about not. things that work because, you know, so that we'll be able to draw the line before people will say, oh, the people that are saying inspire to aspire to perspire or however you, <laughs> are, you understand. <laughs> so it's not about motivational speaking because there are keys that you need to uh, uh, have to adopt the lifestyle of financial planning that will enable you to have financial uh, freedom. The other thing you also spoke about is perhaps, you know, the mentality. How, how, do you, how you, are you able to differentiate that, especially perhaps uh, in the past, or perhaps it's still happening, some of those women in Idumota, uh, in those Let markets, Yes. yes. Okay, go ahead. Let me give you a perfect example, right? Have you ever gone for an interview and they ask you, how much do you want to earn? Many a times people sell themselves short, right? They don't think that they should be paid for that thing. How many people are doing things for free? When I started Money Africa, I used to give financial literacy lessons for free. 
Now, guess what? I've put a structure to it. I've done it properly. We've made XX million in revenue in 2019 just by knowing that, number one, I can actually make money from this. Number two, building structure. So you need to change that mind. You need to change that mind that whatever you think as is free, you can actually start earning money from it. There's a child on YouTube. Guess what he does, Nancy? He reviews video game packs. Guess how much he has made? They have made millions of dollars just by this child sitting down on YouTube and reviewing it. Now, you see lots of African parents. Now, all of a sudden, they're all interested in sports. They are taking their child to now start learning how to play soccer. But back in those days, remember when children used to play football and your parents would be fighting with you that you shouldn't do it because they did not think that it had a career or they did not see a future in it. So now, even people that have children as entertainers, now they are warming up to you. They are buying their children guitars. They are warming up to this new thing. So our mind about money is very critical. Do you actually think that you can make money from it? Do you think that you actually have value, that people are going to pay for that value? So just get in the right mindset and also start doing research. Every time you want to get into a market, there's nothing new under the sun. Somebody has done it before. There's a lady in the U.S. She wrote a book. Guess what the book is about, Nancy? How to make your child stop crying. <laughs> Guess what? She made over a million dollars in revenue from writing that e-book. She's sitting there in her house. <laughs> she wrote an e-book. She edited it. She put it on Amazon. Over a million dollars. So really, you need to open your mind that I can actually make money. I can put structure to it and I can get value. Now, the question which I wanted to also ask earlier was about the, in, perhaps in the past, and it still happens now, some of the women, you know, that you see in Odumota, the men that you see in Newi, you know, doing big businesses, have this kind of apprenticeship structure. They've been managing yeah. their money for a long time. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. uh, yes. So we, must we all have that personal finance skills to manage our money? Or those traditional skills still, you know, are still relevant? Hold strong. Yes. For well, Nancy, the skills have always been there. It just depends on how they call it. Now we started calling it personal finance, but it's always been there. If you look at some families, they don't make as much money as another family. But guess what? They're able to send their children to good schools. They're able to see, you know, get good clothes for their children and see them do better. While some other families, they're not making as, they're making way more than this other family that is not making that much. But instead, they're spending their money on Ashwee B. They're doing big burial. They're doing big parties. And they're not putting it where their mouth is. So all these things have always been there. And if we're being honest with us, we know at least one family like that. So all these things that we are talking about now, we are just now giving it a name, but they've always been there. You know, just little, little things. How should we have a budget? Some people will go to the market. Somebody will have a list. Another person will go to the market and they will be as the spirit leads. So even things that they did not plan for, they will buy it. It ends up getting rotten in the freezer. Some people else, they do not buy, plan to buy clothes, but somebody else comes to them, ah, come and buy this Ashwee B. That they do not plan for that 30K, that 40K, boom, it's gone like that. Now, it might not look like a lot, but look at that money in multiples. Look at that 5K Ashwee B. Think of it five times. Think of it 20 times. Then it starts to make sense. Another example I like to use is look at our clothes, right? There are some clothes you see in your wardrobe. You bought it about 10 years ago. You did not even know that you had it. Or sometimes you bought those clothes five years ago. Imagine if people put the same energy they put towards buying clothes into actually investing. You will see people's wardrobe. It's not even enough. They have to start using their children's wardrobe <laughs> because they, 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 they can't take it all. They're consistent. Every time they need to buy, update something new, get another pair of shoes, get another dress, get another jacket. And like small by small by small, it grows. It's like moving to a new house. When you first move in there, you don't have plenty of things. Try moving out of that house in five years. What happens? You cannot imagine all the things that you've now packed into that new house. So we just need to channel that same mindset into our investing. Every time I eat, I must invest. So this month, if I'm going to allocate some money towards grocery, buying the, paying the children's school fees, we must set aside something for the future. So yes, Nancy, the strategy has always been there. We are simply not just now giving it a fancy name. Mm. You know, uh, <laughs> so many things to talk about, really, because perhaps yeah. women, as women, we are also guilty of some of those things. Do you understand? There should be, in one of the Finance Fridays editions, I did, uh, I was speaking to another fi personal finance expert, Jerry, I would like cut you, Ashwabi, because the parties you go to in Lagos this weekend, you can count the number of parties we'll go to, and even the women. And the thing, the, the surprising thing now is that when you wear the Ashwabi, you don't even want to wear that clothes somewhere else. So you are piling, yeah. and I'm like, this is crazy. And perhaps <laughs> with the social media space, with the entertainment space, and with the space we're seeing right now, 
a lot of people are being influenced in that direction. The celebrity, yeah. the celebrity lifestyle. And you see even people not making so much money trying to do that which they are not supposed to do. So how do we yeah. curb, yes, how do we curb this? How do we curb this? Number one, Nancy, we need to start making investment cool again. And that is why I'm so excited about the onslaught of fintech apps. We need to start making investment cool again. We need to start going for dinners and we're talking about our money. Another thing about money is how it's uncomfortable. I remember when I started Money Africa. So every time on Twitter, on Instagram, money, 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 and it gets uncomfortable. Who is this girl always talking about money? Almost as though it's something you should be shy about. You know how people are reluctant to talk about sex? Sometimes they also have the same reluctance to talk about money, almost as though you're being pruned. But one thing I've noticed in developed economies, when they're having lunch with their friends, they're talking about, oh, how much are you earning? Imagine you going to a place and you're actually asking your friends how much you're earning. That is such an uncomfortable conversation, but guess why they do it? So it helps them position. So it helps them re-strategize. So it helps them plan. So at least you have an idea of what people in that industry are charging. So it helps you to also know how much to ask for. Because information is actually what? It's power. So we need to start changing our mindset. Knowing that, oh, I actually need to start investing. So you're also asking your friends, how are you guys investing? Have you bought social shares? Have you heard about a money market mutual fund? What are we doing about real estate? So you'll start making that conversation very common and very regular. Now, uh, Tosi, can I Sorry, I'm listening. Yes, Tosi, can you really save and invest on any amount of money that you earn? Because for some people, they'll be like, oh, yes. see, see these two ladies, they are just ranting on TV. Yes, save and invest. <laughs> it should be for people earning so so amount of money. But can you save and invest with XYZ yeah. amount, with a 10,000 naira, with a 5K, with a yes, 50,000 naira earnings every month? You can. Let me tell you why you can, Nancy. The truth is, many people wait to become before they become before they hit it, before they can start investing. But you lose out on learning the habit because at the end of the day, it boils down to habit. So you're thinking to yourself, ah, but it's just five k every month now. It's not that much. But you guess what? You can actually learn with the habit. So once you start putting away, let's say even look at this, 5,000 every month, that's about 60,000 naira. Now we're talking about, we've not even added the impact of the interest. At the end of that year, that person can go and learn a skill. That skill can now make them start any more money. So you start seeing people now, they are going into something like, um, they are now sewing clothes, they are now doing hairdressing. They can invest on getting a better website for their company so that they can increase their sales. So the whole essence about saving and investing sometimes is to increase your capacity. So that you can do more. So let's say you're in a small shop you're selling. When you save for a whole year, ha, can I get a bigger shop? Can I bring in more hands? Can I add another product to what I'm selling? Right? So it's not just you'll be saving that 5K till Jesus comes. It keeps growing bigger. It keeps expanding. You keep expanding your cost. And once you expand, you have more money to invest because you cannot invest what you do not have. So yes, Nancy, even with 5K, you can start. Okay, let's go back to that shopping thing. Because that shopping thing is a very serious problem. There are a lot, of people, that's, there are a lot of people that are shopaholics. How do you shop smart? In fact, when I was going through this in my head, uh, mm -hmm. preparing for the show, um, I did say, perhaps, how do I shop smart? Perhaps I should shop solo. I should go alone. I shouldn't go with someone. You should go alone. <laughs> I shouldn't go with a friend that will tell me, this thing is fine, no? Pick it and add, no? I shouldn't go with Tosi. I say, let's go, let's travel somewhere. And you start influencing me. Oh, Nancy, this suits your color. Oh, blue looks good on you. No, take the blue, Don't leave the green. <laughs> Isn't I think, it? I think this is what I think. I think number one, um, and I don't want to sound, because when, every time I say this, they laugh. The truth is, um, Nancy, we're all not going to be here forever. My grandma passed away this week. She's now 85, she's gone. Every, we would all eventually go. So. We are not. We want to do, make sure that we also enjoy this money, right? But we don't want to do it at the expense of our future. So this is what I always tell people: have a target call and a happy target, or an indulging target. So that target, you know, that this is the amount of money I have to buy clothes or to go for drinks or to go for movies or something, something to make myself happy. So it's it's and it's something that you look forward to. So if your budget for the first two months is 10,000 naira, I know that I have 10,000 naira to spend on a dress. So I'm very deliberate. I'm looking for that nice dress that is going to be 10K because this is what I've planned to spend for it. Many people don't do that. Then they end up breaking their budget and splurging. 
So when you are very deliberate about having something set aside for those things that you actually enjoy doing, it helps you to keep it within limits. Because at the end of the day, shopping in itself is not a bad thing. Like you rightly said, it's always how we don't it's not excessive. Even investing too much can be a problem. Imagine a family investing so much at the expense of their children so you can afford to get your children to good schools but instead you are investing it and sending them to public schools. That's not wisdom. So we always have to ensure that we are doing everything in moderation. Yes, that's the word. Do everything in moderation. Final question. How do you keep away from debt? Because a lot of people, let me speak it in Yoruba, what Jegbe say? So how do you, Project. yes, <laughs> for our Yoruba <laughs> friends, <laughs> how do you keep, yeah, you a, was, how do you keep away from Beseo debts? <laughs> there was a hashtag going on on Twitter called Onik Bese. Oh, so really? every time somebody, they know somebody is paying money, they'll just tap the person's name and put hashtag Onik Bese. So a debt, I'm very happy that we're having this conversation on debt. Number one, we have two kinds of debt. We have the good debt and we have the bad debt. We have to be very, very careful that we stay away from the bad debt. So what is a bad debt? A bad debt is when you spend money and the money does not bring you anything back. So you're spending money on clothes, you're spending money on travel that you cannot afford, you're spending money on things, you're taking a debt, you're taking a loan to spend money on something that is not bringing you anything back. However, if you're spending money on a good education, if you're spending money on getting a place to live, or sometimes even a car. It depends on what kind of car. You know, there are sometimes you do the math that if you are driving, it's cheaper than if you were using like an Uber or other things. So something that improves the standard of living of your family. Yes, that's a good investment. So how do we then stay away? The first question we always ask is, can you afford it? So for instance, if you take a, if you have, if you earn a hundred thousand naira and you take a loan of one point five million. You're about to say that on Koja, yeah, right. That is, you're, you're biting more than you can chew. You shouldn't be doing that. Because imagine them coming every month to take 50% of your salary. It's like you're working for the, for the creditor. So how can I afford it? And also, the interest rate is very, very important. Mm -hmm. Any microfinance companies charge them about 5% per month. In a year, that's about 6, 60%. So if you borrow the 100,000 naira, you are paying back 60%, 60,000 naira as interest. Nancy, can you see it? So when we know about these things, about the cost of the debt, the affordability, bad loans, good loans, it helps us make better decisions. So instead of taking that basic, if it is not really necessary or if it is not a good loan, why don't you just wait? Just wait it out. You can wait. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> wait a day. Wait a day to know if you will need it, if you will be in the consciousness, if you feel the same way. Absolutely. Yes. Tosin. Absolutely. We have to go. Yes. It's the end. But I know that these issues which we've talked about, we can expand on it. Like I said, yes. it's Finance Friday segment, so we'll see how we can expand on it moving forward. Thank you, Tosi. Let's talk soon. Thank you, you for having me. Yes. I'm so grateful. Yeah. So have a lovely right. weekend. Have a lovely weekend. You too. Thank you. All right. I've been speaking with Tosi Olasha, who is uh, the founder of Money Africa. You've heard what we've said. But I think the basic of it is moderation in anything you do. Have it in mind that you need to spend, you need to save, you also need to invest, you need to shop smartly. I'm not saying if you like something, don't go, but you need to do it in moderation because even the products that you're shopping, companies also need it to pay their employees. So you will need to be smart. It's been so nice having you as company, not just today, this week. Hopefully I will see you all next week. Be the best you can be, but a change you want to see. I need to take this tweet before we go director. Ebuka Rafael says, if you're interested in business and you don't watch Money Line with Nancy on AIT and follow Nancy, you are missing a lot. Thank you, Ebuka, for that. If you don't watch this show, like that singer, waiting you gain. I am Nancy Naji. I will see you all next week. Bye now.